Today's episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies are the undies that I have on me. Also, today we're brought to you by Factor. Factor is going to get you those good meals so you can eat pretty damn good as well. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode of Cax and Credo in the morning. It's that time again. Oh, boy. <laughs> are we doing show tunes now? Is this us? No, the show tunes are over. How is it? Oh, it's just like, it's that time again. And yeah. that's all you had? That's all I got. That's you enough show like, tunes Welcome for the back, day. my friend. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's if I kept going, but I didn't. I stopped. That's your show tune of the day. We'll spend together for an hour talking about stuff. Sure. Or you could <laughs> quit listening if you've had enough. <laughs> I mean, like we can. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, you can you can keep going if you want. I'm done. No, I'm. I, you know what? I feel like I'm okay. <laughs> um, why well, are you doing? I have a lot that I want to share with you. I wrote it all down all too. Right. But before we even get to that. Literally today, like uh, today, I went out and I saw a uh, friend's new movie. It was lovely. Uh, he had a wonderful screening of this film he directed, and it was very cute. It was a murder mystery. Loved the whole thing. But because I, you know, I want to go support in style, I took right. some of my clothes to the dry cleaner in order to get, you know, some nice shirts dry cleaned. And I went to go pick it up this morning. As I go to the dry cleaner in the parking lot, is a dude. In a the most flamboyant Jeep I've ever seen. Like not like cool fun flamboyant, but like I've got a lot of opinions on immigrants flamboyant. <laughs> and, <Yep. laughs> and he's sitting there listening to, I swear to you, just a jazzier version of bum 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 right? <laughs> yep. A giant stogie. The biggest cigar <laughs> I've ever seen. And he's his window's down and he's just sitting there. I don't know what this man's doing there. I don't know why he's there, but he's parked, and the only other parking space available is right behind him, right, on the opposite side of the parking lot. Yeah. So I pull in, walk to go get my laundry, get my laundry, pay the nice lady, take my laundry, put it in my trunk, get in my car, and I begin to back up. And because I have one of those cars that has, like, the beep, 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 when you back up, right. and it has the screen that tells you if you're going to, you know, if you get close, it's, like, green, then yellow, then yeah. red, right? So... I use it all the time, and the damn thing, I never get to red. I just never get to red, because the one time I did get to red, I bumped in this dude's car, because he had, again, a giant pickup truck, and <laughs> yep. I had no space, and I thought I had space, and I didn't, right? Yeah. So I never let it get to red, and so I get to yellow, and then I drive away. I'm driving down the street, and I start to hear, honk, 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 honk. I'm like, what the hell? So... I'm at a red light. This dude pulls alongside me. Same guy, stogie in mouth, except <laughs> his shades are down now. And he's like, stop right there, bro. Stop right there. Stop right there. I'm like, what the hell? He's like, you hit my car. You hit my car, and you're going to drive away? You're going to drive away, dude? This guy must have been 70, maybe. <gasps> Talk like the bro bro who ever lived. Right. And I'm like, uh, what? The man... Grandor, I was in the I was at a red light in the middle of the road. He got out of his car, walked up to my car. And I was like, what I'm I'm so confused. What's going on? I was trying to be very like diffuse the situation. Right. Like, I'm sorry, what's going on? He's like, You hit my car. I was like, I, I promise you I did not hit your car. And he's like, I felt a bump. I felt a bump. I was like, ah, I I mm, I I don't think that. I don't think I did that. I uh, have this this camera here, and I backed up to yellow, and then I moved on. He's like, no, oh, don't lie to me. I felt the bump. And I was like, you're more than welcome to check the car, but can we pull over? And he's like, you're going to stay right here. Meanwhile, cars are getting behind us honking. <laughs> and, I, and because I was positive this guy would chase me, I was just enjoying them honking at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm telling you, my man, I did not back into you. I, I, If you want, we can pull over, and I will show you how my camera works and show you exactly where I was when I backed out. I turned. There's no way I could have hit you with the back of my car. because, And he's like, you hit me. You hit me. And I was like, feel free to check the back of my car and the back of your car for any damage. If there's any damage, I will gladly give you my insurance card, but I promise you I did not hit you. And he's like, 
okay. And he's he's inspecting the back of our cars. <laughs> in the middle of the street, dude. What the shit? People are driving around us and yelling at him. So I'm enjoying the whole thing. I don't even give a shit. I was right. like, yes. And he's yelling at them. And so he looks at the car. He's like, all right, well, there's no damage. But I know what I know. I'm like, uh, uh, all right, I understand. But I did not hit you. I promise you I didn't hit you. He's like, well, I'm going to have to take your word for it. I don't even know you. I'm like, well, that, that's unfortunate, but I don't know you either. And I know that I didn't hit your car, and you've chased me down to tell me that I hit your car, and I, I did not. And that seems very aggressive to me. And he's like, well, this is why people have to talk like normal people. I was like, yes, that's exactly, exactly. And he's like, okay, well, I know what I know. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. I, 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 again, I did not hit you. I swear to you I didn't hit you. All right, he gets back in his car. All of his windows are down. He picks up the cigar that he put in the cup holder, by the way, which I'm sure is ashed everywhere in his car. <laughs> Sucks on a little bit, puffs out smoke, and goes, that's what's wrong with America. No one wants to talk anymore. And I'm like, have, have a good one. And he's like, I know you hit me. I was like, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I did not hit you. I walked past you, noticed you were in your car. Oh, because he said to me, he said, um, did you notice I was even in my car? Is that why you drove away? And I was like, no. I walked past you to get my laundry, noticed you in your car listening to music, some very cool music like that, by the way. And I saw you smoking a cigar, and then I got in my car. I definitely noticed you were there. I wasn't trying to hit and run you. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then I drove off. I was like, so um, I'm going to go. And he's like, okay. Just like still staring me down like maybe I did something wrong. And I was just like, I really feel like he just wanted to like fight someone. He was trying to get in a fight. Because why else was he in the parking Like what was he doing in the parking lot just sitting there smoking a cigar, listening to smooth jazz? Like, what was <laughs> and then he just happened to see me and then come directly after me. I was like, what the hell is this guy's problem? And I was just like, all right, dude, cool, and just drove off. <laughs> and and then he got back, you know, in his car and then, like, kept go going somewhere. I don't know where the hell he went, but we were in the middle. For anyone who lives in L.A. who is listening to this, we were in the middle of Washington Boulevard. That is one of the busiest streets in the city. This dude <laughs> did not care. <laughs> <laughs> I and I, I was like, like I'm not gonna drive away because if anyone's gonna pull out a gun and shoot me, it's this guy who oh, does yeah. not ca he does not care about anyone at all. <laughs> Clearly, and I was like, oh yeah, sure, man. I was just very casual, and he was like, yeah. this is why people need to talk more. I was like, I, I feel like you, <laughs> you know, I didn't say it, but I was like, you came at me really aggressive. What was I get like? You know, if I was at your level and you came out, you pulled up to my the side of my car, yelled at me. Got out of your car and walked up to my driver's window. If I was anyone else, if I if this was a different state, you would have got your ass shot, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is uh It was insane. This was at 9:15 in the morning, I think. Like around <laughs> between 9 and 10. So yeah, dude smoking a cigar at 9 a.m. That's already a sign. I'm telling you, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. But the minute I the minute I was done, I I did speech to text on, on the way home. Just re I was like, all right, need to remember this entire thing for Crendor. <laughs> yeah, this was. We need a name for this guy. He's got to be like Stogie Sam. Stogie Steve. Stogie Steve. That's a that's a better one. America's freedom cigar smith. <laughs> was it okay? Hold on. So he was like in his car, right? Like he wasn't outside of his car. No, he was in, again, if you can imagine a parking lot that's right. just big enough to have a, a path through the middle for cars to drive, and then on the right and the left are parking spaces, right? And it's like just a little mini mall area with a CVS at the end of it. And right. there's a, a cleaning place there, and he was parked right outside the cleaning place, smoking a cigar. The entire I walked past him after I parked. And then got my laundry, then walked back. He was still sitting there smoking a the cigar. I don't know what he was doing in that parking lot at all. <laughs> Maybe that's where he loves smoking his stogie. Maybe. I was trying to – the only other places in that shopping center are like a nail salon, a uh, Korean barbecue place. Like just n no place is either open or a place that I think he would go to. Right. 
So uh, I don't know why he was – and he was nowhere near the CVS, which is on the way far other end. So, again, I don't – I feel like he was just sitting there waiting to fight somebody because he was in a fighting mood. He might have just been waiting to fight somebody. I think uh, so, too. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> – Especially with the attitude of like the people don't want to talk these days, which is more just like nobody wants to talk to him. Is yeah, what it's it's, it's the same vibe like. as when like uh, you see those videos of the old ladies fighting with cashiers, and you're like, oh, she just wants someone to talk to. That's so sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that's it's all suspicious. I don't think Stogie Steve was up to no good. Yeah, Stogie Steve, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he's uh, he's no gray storm, that's for sure. He's yeah, too he's, he's too in my, he's too in my business. Yeah. Yeah, he's no Newport Richie. <laughs> <laughs> but who is really? Yeah, that's true. I also have another story that I have to read verbatim because I it was a dream I had. Okay. Uh, I woke up and um, wrote this down. This was six days ago at two thirty eight a.m. I wrote this down. So this okay. is. I went to bed at like 11. So this is, you know, about you know, almost four hours in. Right. Had a dream where Crendor was hosting a panel at an outdoor festival put on by Jack Black. It was <laughs> God, about I expanding. Wish. Right. right. <laughs> it was about expanding consciousness. Yet for some reason, he tried his hardest to be funny, but no <laughs> one thought it was funny. <laughs> Damn, it was getting too real. <laughs> I wrote down, in fact, it felt painful. <laughs> I was there with my parents for some reason, and as it went on, people fell more and more asleep. Crendor was trying to tell them about chakras, but making jokes the entire time, which no one got. While he was doing so, I was busy scratching on a baseball bat or sword hilt, some type of hilt. Because underneath it was the metallic figure of a little man, and I wanted that figure. <laughs> I have no idea. Like it in the dream, it was like a little metal, almost like um toy soldier looking guy, but it was like a buff dude. And oh, I, I was see, just yeah. chipping away at it. <laughs> Eventually, Crendor ended, and I got up to leave, but Jack Black stopped me and was like, oh, Jesse Cox is here too, and waved and came over to say hi. Well, now but for some reason, right, right. <laughs> for some reason, he looked like young Jack Black, like Jack Black from the movie, um, and then I wrote down the wrong movie name, of course, but <laughs> yeah. um, I was thinking of Demolition Man, is because he's in that movie. Uh. Um, but for some reason, the movie I wrote down, I guess it was autocorrected. Because it says Dune, and that's not correct. But I feel like it just autocorrected because it was 2.38 a.m. Oh, yeah, probably. My parents said, wow, he looks really good for being older. And my dad said, that's because he's married. <laughs> that is something your dad would probably say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I woke up. I realized the reason I was probably having all those dreams is because when I went to bed... I was watching you play Kaizo Ironmon or whatever the hell that thing is. Right. And I think I fell asleep while watching you. And it played just old videos of yours. So I got a mix of both you playing Kaizo Ironmon and then Tropico or something. You were playing oh, something. Oh, yeah, I was playing Tropico. So and I feel, and so when I woke up, it was the end of whatever that game was. So I guess Tropico. Yeah. And I think the two of them combined your voice into my dream, where it was you giving a presentation on <laughs> chakras and stuff. And I was like, dude, I think I got incepted by Grendor. So that yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> dude, that genuinely seeing the Tropico thing that may have summoned Stogie Steve as well. <laughs> <laughs> he heard. He just like just came out of nowhere. He was like formed by atoms. <laughs> they just showed up. That's why it doesn't make sense why he was there. It's just the universe. I need to find a top to spin to make sure I'm I'm actually still in reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's an odd coincidence too. Yep, yep. I Which, I didn't even think about that till now, but I realized, yeah. I, and again, I don't usually what will end up happening is I'll set some sort of timer so if I'm watching or listening or whatever something, my phone will go off by itself. 
but I guess I just fell asleep in the middle of you playing that. Mm. And, uh, yeah, just kept playing your videos all night while I slept until I woke up. It was like, <laughs> what the hell? Now, if only everybody could do that, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be doing a lot better. Yeah, look, I can't <laughs> help it. I, I go to bed roughly the time you're on, like, hour two of you suffering in a video game. And I, I put it on, and I lay there and talk shit and chat, and then I fall asleep. It's great. <laughs> yep. It's good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, luckily yesterday, uh, Blood Bowl was bad, Kaizo was bad, but then I played Sinvicta in Battleship, and he also was like, I'm having terrible luck, and luckily his luck was worse than mine, so I think I cursed him more than that. Did you after. finally do that? I know that was a promise you had made to poor Sinvicta years ago. Oh, we've we've played Battleship numerous times. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I thought you were you were putting it off. You just kept putting it off and putting no, it off. And I was so like, was, that poor man. No, we've played it numerous times, but this was for his subathon from a few weeks ago. And so gotcha. I've been putting it off from that. And so I was like, all right, now I'm good. To, I'm good to play after failing so many times at Kaizo. I was like, I need a battleship break. And it worked out. I beat him. Speaking of Subathon, what what is happening that I'm now involved in something of yours? What is? Oh, from. OK, so yesterday we were talking about the non-content Subathon. All right. So I did one last year and it was pretty fun. But people were like, you should have Jesse play Kaizo on a subathon. I was like, why would Jesse would not come on the my stream to play Kaizo for one of my sub goals? It would have to be like a Jesse subathon. Where I mean, I do it. I don't know how I do it, but I do it. You would do it. Yeah, I just logistically, I don't understand how. I'm not that smart enough to figure out how I would stream to your stream. I don't play know that would... or how I would come on. I don't know either. I would have to like cap capture your window or like watch you play it. I don't know. <laughs> I would have to. Yeah, it seems seems some, complicated. It is complicated. Uh, I was mainly saying that because I was like, I need to do a non-content subathon again because now I got to buy a new car. Ah, uh, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. It's <laughs> not <laughs> so my car. Yes, I do the... it to stream a lot after <laughs> my tire exploded. <laughs> so yeah. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so at first I was like, yeah, we could probably do one of those. Now I'm like, all right, well, now I definitely want to do one of those. Because, uh, yeah, my car, he was like, yeah, this shit's like rusting here and this stuff. And he's like, I'm not going to lie. This car is going to probably keep a uh, nickel and dime in you for a while. I'll just get a new one. So I was like, all right, well. That's fine with me. So I started looking at new, and by new, I mean new used cars. Right, uh, of course. So right now, I think uh, I'm probably going to get like a Toyota Camry. That's what I'm leaning towards, because as we heard from the other uh, episode we did, uh, Toyota, one of the best cars you can get for like just consistency, not falling apart, uh, just lasting a long time. So I was like, hey, even if you buy one with like 50,000 miles on it, that thing will probably last you like 15 years still. I do feel like uh, if you're going to get a new car, even if it's used, you should definitely get um, all the like bells and whistles in that car. You know, like the cameras and the different things. Just because it's so life-changing, dude, I can't go back. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> well, I can't, I mean, yeah. That whole like looking behind you, that's for suckers, man. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely want the rear view uh, camera thing. That's, like, the main technology I want. I don't care about, like, the supercomputer screen or anything. Like, I don't mind, like, a touch screen or something, but I kind of still like pushing buttons. Like, I don't need a super touch screen, but I do like the rear view camera. So I'd probably want one of those. Oh, yeah. I don't... Uh, every time I see people use, like, um, Teslas and things, and yeah. the buttons are on the screen, I'm like, yo, that seems like a pain in the ass. Yeah, I but hate that. The other day I took an Uber and the driver had, I got picked up on one of those giant Escalades, which, you know, I'm not yep. going to say no to that, but <laughs> it seemed like too much. Yeah. But everything in it was digital. It was crazy. He had a giant screen that was the whole front of the car. The rear view mirror was also a screen. That tripped me out. It was nighttime and it looked like it was day. It tripped <laughs> me out. I was like, yo, that actually is awesome. I don't know how necessary that is, but that's the tech <laughs> yeah. I want in a car. Like, the whole thing was amazing. I was talking to him about it, and he was like, this is the brand new 2023 model. And I was like, wow. I, uh, I mean, what's, what, you know, what, how did you get this? He was like, oh, I do the leasing program? I get a new one every two years. And I was like, oh, that's awesome, but aren't you afraid that by doing Uber, you're, like, dudes are going to puke in the car and stuff? He's like, 
Hasn't happened yet. I give them my angry stare if they're sick. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were going to vomit, but I stared at them. So I, I stared, stared them down. <laughs> <laughs> they don't teach them. Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty excited. I'm not a car person, as you probably know. So, like, I'm the type where I will, I would rather drive a car as long as possible. So, that's why. I was like, listen, at this point, if I'm going to spend like thousands of dollars on repairs, I may as well just like put that down on a new car and just not have to pay repair bills in the future too, hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you might as well do it now. Like you don't want to end up like my parents, my poor mom. She's like, our car is falling apart, but I don't want to get a new car because then a new car and then we'll just be like those old people who die and have a new car. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm like that's so, so dark, mom. So she she doesn't want to get a new car just because she doesn't want to be the old person that dies. <laughs> with the yes, <laughs> she's like then I'll then I'll, like what are you gonna do? Have a second car? I'm like, what is scenario are you living in? <laughs> <laughs> like just get a car. Like just yeah. it doesn't have to be a brand new car. Just get it. Your car. It, here's the thing. In my mind, their car isn't old, but in reality, their car is a 2002 car. Yeah, so it's like pretty old. So, so it's an old car, right? But I'm yeah. like, it's after the 2000s, so it's new. But that's <laughs> not true. It's it's old. And yeah. they keep having to do huge repairs to it. And it's just like, just get like a new, like, find a 2015 or something. You'll be fine. It's, it'll, be, yeah. it'll be okay. But I think she's just like, then we'll have a new car. Then we'll both die. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why is that your attitude? <laughs> or you can have a new car. And what if that car's so good, it helps you live longer? Yeah. She what if it's like such it's a smooth gonna be ride, the... you're like, my back pains went away. Like, who knows? <laughs> She's acting like it's the, the police officer last day on the job thing. It's like, as soon as you get that car, you're dead. It's, it's it. over. Yeah. <laughs> you get a new car and you're over 65, you're, you're dead. Like, why even bother? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, I do think that's the thing. I want I want a car between the years of like 2015 and 2019. I think one sure. of those... I think it's a good amount because I think if you go past 2020, I don't know what happened in the COVID years, right? I'm like, oh, the, did they start like struggling with parts and stuff? I don't want that. But if you go too far back, I'm like, then you're starting to get to, into the range of like my other car. So I'm like, you know what? Give me like a nice middle ground. I think that's where it's still going to have the buttons, right? But it's still got a touch screen and the rear view thing. So I'm like, that's perfect. We get just modern enough, but not too modern. So that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, mine's a 2017 and I have a, a like a monitor dashboard thing and it does just fine and i still yeah. have buttons which is great yeah. sometimes people press the wrong button crendor and <laughs> break my car but like it's fine <laughs> yeah who would do that <laughs> <laughs> also be... my car both the front and rear <laughs> windshield have been broken you know <laughs> la baby i've had my yeah. tires explode at least three <laughs> times i just <laughs> God, I put so much money into this car. I'm like, I couldn't even get a new car if I wanted, dude. Yeah, it's it. There definitely does hit a point where I think some people are like, I don't need a new car. I don't need one. And then it's like you just keep putting money into it. And it's just like it's just going to keep sinking money out of you. It's like you may as well just upgrade <laughs> at that point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no shame in being like, thanks, old car, but you can't take me any further. Like, you're just you're not going to work. And that's yeah. fine. It happens. Uh, truthfully, yeah, as long as you spend within your budget, like if they're telling you it's $4,000 repair, then, you know, find a car that you can afford that would offset the cost of that, right? It just makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, exactly. So, Because your yeah. car's only going to keep falling apart. It's not going to, like, miraculously yeah. recover. <laughs> no, like my car just hit uh, 120,000 miles, and it's like it's not getting any better. <laughs> you got all that. Right. And then I've heard they're like, oh, yeah, with those cars, sometimes the transmissions start acting up. And I'm like, oh, so you're going to spend all this money repairing this. And then the transmission goes. And that's another. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I do not mess with transit transmission stuff, because when I was in college, I had a, a, a Honda. Oh, boy, a Honda something Honda Accord. I don't think it was an Accord. It was something. But I had a Honda. It's been so long, I forgot. But it was it was a little <laughs> dark green number. It was very nice. But that car's transmission broke all the time. <laughs> and I'd always get it repaired. I'd always spend a bunch of money doing it. 
and like into credit card debt issues. Even my mm-hmm. parents helped repair it. Tra- and the transmission would keep breaking. <laughs> now it's... I'm like, transmission breaks once. I'm like, nah, this car's for the streets. Just trash it. <laughs> I don't want it. Like, I'm yeah. so broken by the experience. I don't trust anyone that says, yeah, we'll fix your transmission. Because the options either replace it completely or fix it and know that eventually it's going to break again. Yeah. No, especially, yeah, and transmissions are expensive to fix. And so it's just like, expensive. Yeah. So when I was looking into it, they were like, oh, yeah, Toyota's got some of the best transmissions. I was like, there it is. <laughs> I'll take it. Like, I will yeah. say, I uh, after my Honda died, uh, I had, when I was in grad school, I had my, my, my parents, bless their sweet souls, they, that's when they got their new car. Mm. That is now their their 2002 car. Right. But they gave me their old RAV4. And that Toyota RAV4, that lasted forever. Oh, yeah. I had that thing from whenever the hell they gave it to me until 2017 when I bought my car. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember you drove around in that. Yeah, and I the RAV4 worked. Like, that damn thing, that thing worked. There was no, I never had an issue. The only issue I ever had with it is it had a back tire. And one time I took it through one of those auto washes. And the auto wash pulled off the back tire. <laughs> and I did not realize it until I got home. And I was like, where the hell is the tire in the back? Damn thing pulled it off. <laughs> they like, did you go back? And they're like, here's your tire. <laughs> yes. They're like, here's your tire. And, and, and it wouldn't, like, it had one of those cage lock things. And that was just gone. It, they, it ripped the whole thing off. I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm never using auto washes again. <laughs> Yeah, that's. I don't know. I mean, I I think they're okay. Although, yeah, I've heard it's like they can be bad for your car. But whatever. I mean, I guess it depends if you have a giant tire on the back of your car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's also true. Uh, that's more like a SUV. Isn't that like Jeep? Doesn't Jeep have a lot of tires on the back? So it's like Jeep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a, I mean, a Rav Four was trying to be a Jeep, I think. Yeah. And uh, same vibe. They just put a tire on the back. Eventually, I noticed that the newer models that weren't from the early 2000s, uh, they actually fixed that issue where uh, it wasn't just a tire strapped to the back of a car. It looked like it actually had a cage, <laughs> like a case that it was in. <laughs> yeah. But that wasn't my car. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, you know, even though it is stressful being like, all right, here goes more money. It's like, hey, you know what? It, it'll be more reliable and you get a fun new car to drive around. <laughs> That's yeah. neat. Yeah. So and I, you know what? I can't wait to to be driven around in it by you. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great this July when I'm in Chicago on the 13th. Yes, only a little over a month away. I'm very excited. Uh, hey everyone, hi. Reminder: we have exactly 12 tickets left, and I would love if they sold. 12 tickets. 12 whole tickets. I want to get there, and I want to see say sold out. Yeah, if you even if you're coming already, find some friend that doesn't know anything <laughs> bring, and be like, come yeah, with bring me. Bring those suckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they'll be good like, friends. what? And you'd be like, yeah, just go. <laughs> yeah. We just need twelve point. of them. Yeah. You can find twelve people. Go to work. If you're if you're if you own a business, force your employees to come. <laughs> yeah, force them. All like, pay raises are dependent on <laughs> coming to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they have a terrible time. Oh, especially if they have a t- yeah. yeah. The more angry they get at us, the better. Yeah, if you if they go and they hate it, it'd be like, God, remember that time we went to that terrible show? And they'd be like, be like yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> that was the <laughs> worst time I ever had. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, buy those tickets. If you're just yep. a rich person, you can just buy them up anyway. You know, you don't even have to go. Just buy them. Yeah, if you're like a Saudi prince, you don't have to come. You don't need to. But if you buy the tickets, we'd be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> uh and then you know if i drive you around i'll be like look my backup came and then i'll back up and then i'll hit oh, yellow and i'll and be then, like that's a good camera dude <laughs> and then i got the stogie will come out and be like hey you hit my car <laughs> you hit my car <laughs> <laughs> i'll be like dude, this is some weird time loop mm-hmm. um then we'll both wake up <laughs> and then we'll both wake up which by the way actually i don't really watch anime but I've been watching a good anime called Summertime Rendering. That's pretty good. Oh, boy. Now I got to look it up. Summertime Rendering? Yeah. It's only like 24 or 5 episodes. It's a, oh, it's a thriller. Yeah. I love the I love the thriller mystery type things. It's pretty crazy. Uh, 
It's kind of like Parasite, with the where the aliens came down, and then there's a little Migi hand guy. It's kind of like that. Interesting. Yeah, it was pretty good. And I'm prick, I'm picky with anime, as you probably know. So I am aware of that. I'm aware of your pickiness. Yeah. So check that one out. It's pretty good. What sparked this? Uh, Toaster Woman watched it, and she was like, "You'd probably really like this." And I was like, "All right." And then I watched it, and I'm like, "I like this." Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> of all the answers, that's the best one you could give. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was it. We took a break from our Sailor Moon watching to watch this. Apparently, there is a Watanabe-made anime that I really... I don't... The problem is I always forget the name of it because it's one of those things where I'm just like, ah, it's called Lazarus. <laughs> oh, I am yeah. so excited. So it kind of... Um, so, you know, uh, Watanabe is the dude behind some of my actual favorite anime because I don't watch a lot, but it's the ones right. that I love, like Samurai Champloo and Space Dandy and Cowboy Bebop, which are the all, like, I love them. I love Space Dandy too. If Crendor, if you haven't seen Space Dandy, I love it. Love I have it. not seen it. Also, apparently he did Vision of Escaflone, which was a show I watched as a kid, which is pretty amazing. I didn't know that till I just looked at this. Anyway, oh. um, Lazarus is basically the premise. I, I don't, I guess it's not out yet. I don't know. It's 13 episodes. Um, but, it's the year 2052, and Dr. Skinner has discovered a miracle drug, and this drug cures everything. Like It's like the cure-all of all drugs. But okay. then three years later, the dude announces that the drug is actually going to kill everyone who took it within three years. Oh. Maybe something along the lines of, like, when you took it, you have three years, and everyone's about to die soon, is what he said. I see. Okay. And so a task force of five agents is assembled to locate the doctor, find the vaccine, and save everyone. And the show's called Lazarus. And it's one of those things where it's like, did he actually poison everyone? Or did he just say that to cause society to collapse? Oh, yeah. Or like it's like one of those mysteries. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what I like. That's pretty much so, what this show is, too. So, yeah, that's yeah, I'm excited about that. But I don't know um, anything about it. I guess... They said the project is planned to be completed in 2024. Oh, okay. So we got a little bit to go, oh. but that's the next one I'm excited for. Is it called Lazarus or Project Lazarus? Um, it, it's, so I see Lazarus on here. Oh, Lazarus anime. Yeah, that one oh, looks yeah. really cool. I think I saw a trailer for it a little bit ago. So at least there's a trailer. That seemed that seemed pretty neat. Oh, yeah, there you go. I see it. Yeah, that's so, pretty good. Oh, yeah, that. it's directed by one of my favorites, possibly the only director I know who makes anime. I'm sure there are others, but <laughs> yeah. for some reason, this dude, I love all of his stuff. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, well, did you have anything else that happened? No, I got nothing. No. <laughs> all right. Except for the fact that I spent time this week looking up uh, Garfield on Etsy to find you something to buy, but <laughs> I didn't find it. I didn't know what you would want, so I gave up. Dude, I will say, I am going to go see the Garfield movie next week. And we need a report. I need yeah. you're the biggest Garf fiend I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I love me some Garfield, but I do know that it's reportedly bad. Sure. It's got a 5.9 <laughs> out of 10 on IMDb, 36% rotten tomatoes, 31% right. Metacritic, 91% yep. on Google though. <laughs> uh which is probably just a meme thing, but uh I'm I'm genuinely curious to see how good, bad, like fun, bad, bad, bad this movie is. So I will report. I'm excited because uh, if anyone's going to give me the real truth on the Garfield movie, <laughs> I feel like it's going to be you. Yes. No, I'll, I'll give you the real truth. Nothing but the truth. Uh, also, I'm going to need the plot. Oh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll go into full detail next week about the plot. Good, good, good. The character It'll be, it might be the Garfield episode. Yeah. Uh, how... Chris Pratt is as Garfield. I mean, now he's been Mario. He's been Garfield. He's, he's been everybody. Uh, it's got Samuel L. Jackson and Snoop Dogg in it. So that's something. Who do you think plays normal? Um, I hope it's Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is apparently Snoop Cat. Oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Someone was like, what if instead of making him a dog... 
We make him a cat. And everyone was like, oh, good idea, sir. Good idea. Oh, my. It's funny because he's Snoop Dogg is his name. Yes, yes, yes. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, I don't see a normal on this list. I see Otto, John, Jinx, Snoop Cat, Vic. Roland, Odie, Marge, Odie number one, Nolan, and Olivia. Oh, this probably, this would, uh, uh, this is supposed to be the origin story, right? So uh, probably yeah. there would be no normal because normal was a little baby. Yeah, I think so. Um, That's for the sequel. Yeah, that's the, that's the that sequel. That will definitely get made. 100%. Uh, yeah, this is, you know, like even even looking through the books, John is pretty weird. Like he's genuinely a weird guy. Um, yeah. Have you seen Garfield without Garfield? <laughs> oh yeah, I think I I remember people telling me about that. I've seen I've seen him a while. If you ago. read it and there is no Garfield, John, it, you're just like, yeah, no, this checks out though. <laughs> him just talking to himself, it everything about it still makes sense, and you're just like, wow, no, yeah, no, he's he's having problems. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely curious, you know, and at worst, I'll get to eat some popcorns. So that's good. I mean, an excuse to eat popcorns always, a, it's a good day. Yeah. It's always a good day. But not uh, that like crappy popcorn, but like theater popcorn. Yeah. It's the theater popcorn. You can tell the difference. You really can. And I, it's unfair. I'll be honest. I want <laughs> theater popcorn at home, but if you try to buy anything that says like theater popcorn, it tastes like butt. Yes, it does. Butt corn. <laughs> the old uh, butt corn. I don't like that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, but you know what is good at home? Oh boy, that is. I mean, that is. <laughs> yeah, that is. That. Yep. <laughs> yep. Me undies. Speaking of butt. <laughs> hey guys. I know. I know. It's that time of year where everyone's showing off a little more skin. Everyone's looking a little bit better, or at least trying to do that. As a man, sometimes you know it's hard. It's hard to do that. You can't gu get gussy up anymore, right? Like, what are you going to do? Wear a tight shirt? Like, that's, you know, that's... Uh, there was a time where we wore powdered wigs. <laughs> we had all sorts of things. We had frills, and we don't have that anymore. Well, MeUndies is here because they have unleashed the next phase in natural male enhancement. <laughs> that's a weird <laughs> phrase that I just said, and I... <laughs> the contoured... Pouch and ball caddy. That's right. The micro modal sling that separates and lifts the boys down below. Nine out of ten women swear this sophisticated brief technology will make you look a huge. And that's not all. It's super comfortable. Like all MeUndies. MeUndies, again, micro modal magic. I don't know what's in it. I don't know how it works. But Crendor and I wear them all the time. Right now, the ones that I have on are just the most normal pair I own. They are just like burgundy colored. That's it. Just burgundy. <laughs> Mine, uh, I got aliens with cows and spaceships. <laughs> For some reason, I just have burgundy. That's, that's, that's what I got going on right now. Still good. But you can get them in anything from black classics to fun, expressive prints like Crendor. Mayandy says something for everyone. And... They come in sizes extra small to 4XL, guaranteed to flatter your bod. They got versatile loungewear. You can do more than just underwear. You can do joggers and hoodies and onesies and bralettes and so much more. Plus, they're sustainably sourced, and um, you know that you're going to enjoy them and love them and feel good about wearing them. Plus, if you're not happy with your first pair of MeUndies, it's on me undies. They'll just be like, look, don't return them. We don't want your dirty underwear back. <laughs> so try it right now. Good things do come in big packages. Ladies, buy it for your man. Why not? Men, buy it for your man. Why not? Ladies, buy it for your ladies. I'm not going to tell you what to do, <laughs> but just buy it and let them know that we sent you. Uh, get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's MeUndies.com slash Crendor for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Also, today we're brought to you by Factor. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. 
Meet your wellness goals in time for summer like we were just talking about with chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian-approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. No matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to eat nutritious and have some great-tasting meals. Here in the office, no joke. We got Factor uh, for, we've been doing it a couple of weeks, and we just get Factor in the office, and, and people here are eating it for lunch. Um, but we also have breakfast options, too. That's what I love the most. Pancakes, the sausage. It's a winner every time. You can also just order side things if you want, um, like, extra chicken or burgies or you want sausages or whatever the hell you want. They have that. They have juices and smoothies and little treats that you can get. There's all sorts of stuff besides just the general meals. You can add add-ons. It's awesome. I love that kind of stuff. In this office, we, for some reason, went really hard in on the chicken fettuccine train. We, because it's real simple. It's it's exactly what you expect. It's chicken fettuccine. You got the sauce with some uh, broccoli. Very simple. Um, but also, you know, there's so many other varieties. You can go check it out even before you press buy. You can just go and look. With over 35 meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every single week, you'll have new flavors to explore, and trust me, you'll find something you love. Crush your wellness goals with dietitian approved meals and ingredients you can trust. From breakfast to dessert, stay fueled all day. Head over to factormeals.com slash cox50 and use code cox50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code COX50 at factormeals.com slash cox50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Once again, that's factormeals.com slash cox50, code COX50. Now it's headed to Chopper Jefferson's guy, the Crendor. Crendor, I was like, dropping out there. Oh my goodness, the traffic is getting insane. There's so many cars, there's so many boats, planes, trains, uh, cicadas. I mean, the cicadas have taken over everything. They're on the roads, they're driving cars, they're getting kind of angry. Uh, they are cutting people off in traffic. Uh, they're hitting people in the head. Uh, they're coming out of the ground. It's just very rude, but, you know, you gotta deal with them. They're also very loud. Thank you. Is that a thing you're actually dealing with? Uh, close by. There's a lot of people. Like, my family, uh, more south of me has, like, a bunch of cicada stuff. There's, like, different areas that have crazy cicadas. Luckily, by me, I haven't seen too many. There's, like, some, but it's, like, normal amounts of cicadas. That's, uh, I've been watching videos, thankfully, at least here. Uh, when I used to live in the Midwest, I would see cicadas, but on the West Coast... Only earthquakes. Only Earth is trying to kill me, not insects. And so <laughs> it's wild because I'm seeing videos of people like uh, – there was this girl who made a – I think it was a viral TikTok where she's like, I can't go outside. And then it cuts to like a swarm of cicadas on her front lawn. And I was like, yo, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's some people got crazy. Then their dogs and stuff are eating the cicadas. Like, it's getting uh, it's got a little wacky wild out there. But yeah. luckily, it's not too bad here. I'm uh, I'm impressed with everyone who's sort of making it through it because it isn't just one; it's two waves. I'm not sure what you would call that. <laughs> two invasions. Oh, yeah. Two invasions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 17 so year and the other. Year. 13 maybe i don't know something like that yeah so oh. good luck to everyone out there stay safe um don't get caught up in it yeah that's the traffic all right let's go to sports wait weather is what's next <laughs> this guy's skipping around <laughs> uh let's see uh i'll do the old hold down the weather thing all right and bam uh, can I get a weather report on my hometown, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, to increase the weather City? report Yo. tally, please? Wait, have we? Yes. <laughs> Wait, the weather report tally. Have we done this one already? Or is he saying just for the... I think he wants the total weather report tally. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe maybe um, he's trying to get like a waning gibbous. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Either way, we're, that's where we're going. All uh, right. Ho Chi Wait, Minh question. City. What? Does Ho Chi Minh City have the Avengers Tower in it? I don't know. I'm looking at the photo. I didn't know this. 
It looks like the Avengers Tower to me. All right. Ho Chi Minh City, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's... Wait, where's the... Oh, there it is. Feels like 104. Oh, my goodness. Woo! Woo! Uh, high, 95. Low, 82. Humidity, a 78 percentiles. Pressure, 29.98 inches. Six-mile visibility, eight-mile-an-hour winds, dew point 80. UV index, 10 of 11. Moon phase, waning crescent with a 5.29 a.m. sunrise and a 6.13 p.m. sunset. Looking at the old 10-day... 10 day, 10 day, 10 day. We've got ourselves a beep, beep, beep. 95 degrees, sunny Sunday, but developing thunderstorms in the afternoon. Chance of rain, 40%. Monday, p.m. thunderstorms, 97 degrees. Tuesday, p.m. thunderstorms, 96 degrees. Wednesday, 93 with scattered thunderstorms. Thursday, 92. Friday, 94. Saturday, 94. Sunday, 91. It's just, it's a lot of 90 degrees with thunderstorms is what it is. So I'm, Is it the rainy season, I imagine? Uh, it looks like it, just judging by the amount of rain. I, I'm mesmerized by this city because the places I find are either five stars, two reviews, or 3.9 stars, 80 billion reviews. <laughs> like there's... <laughs> There's so many places. This is five stars, 18 reviews, five stars, 17 reviews, five stars, eight reviews, five stars, 50 reviews. It's all coffee, too. Oh, yeah, a lot of Korea. What the? This place is Bros Korea. 33,000 reviews, five stars. Like, what? Bros Korea? Yeah, Bros Korea. And it's straight up got 33,000 reviews, five stars. That's what I'm saying. This one... Five stars, 170 reviews. Like, I'm blown. I'm blown. I don't know what this means. Are, are we getting punked right now? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is five stars, 15 reviews. I've never seen a place with so many five star restaurants. Yeah, this is insane. This is this? Is... Are we getting botted? What's happening here? But at the same time, 4.2, 3,000. Uh, but then right next to it, five stars, nine reviews. This, uh, what's five stars, 30 reviews? But this one, 4.3, and it has 5,000 reviews. Oh, yeah. I see another one. The Bon Con Quat. Yep. yep. 4.3, yeah. 1,900 reviews. This one, uh, five stars, two reviews. Right next to it, five stars, three reviews. Right next to that, five star, three reviews. Dude, <laughs> are we being punked right? What's happening? Pizza, four peas, Vove, and Kiet, 4.9, 5,500 reviews. Now that's trustworthy. I trust that. Just because it's a 4.9. No, just because it's 4.9 with a lot of reviews. Yeah, but there's like so many reviews. That's like all those people said five stars for the most part. Like it's crazy. Five stars, 25. Five stars, one. Is there like a program where they like, yeah, if you give us five stars. One time I got a tie in LA and the guy was like, hey man, I'll give you 50% off that tie if you give me five stars. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> There might be. I've I've seen those as well. <laughs> they could be doing that. Uh, this is yeah, five stars, twenty eight. That's just this is literally just a chicken restaurant. I went down to Boss Restaurant and KTV four point oh five hundred seventy six reviews karaoke bar. Okay, this one's not not as good. Four point oh. That's practically like a one. But like inflation. five stars, one review. Five stars, thirteen reviews. Five stars, two reviews. Five stars, six reviews. Five stars, four. Like, everywhere I'm clicking is five five stars, three <laughs> reviews. Yeah. Five stars, nine reviews. This, is there a ten star system just specifically in Vietnam? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? I've never seen this before. This has to be, this has to be rigged. It's got to be rigged. I, I don't believe anything. This like is. There's, although I will say, the city is packed. It seems like there's so many restaurants in one block. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of people here. There's so many restaurants. In fact, some might say there's about 9 million people there. 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a lot. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. There's a lot of... Uh, I'm looking at the different Bon Mi places, and, like, man, what's the, what's, the, what's the Vietnam vibe? Like, would Jesse Cox going to Vietnam be cool or, like, 
white guy pathetic. You know, like <laughs> white single white dude in Asia pathetic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying it's pathetic, but like we know the stereotype. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm here to find my wife. Like that kind of vibe. <laughs> I don't want that to be the Jesse Cox experience. Yeah. You just want to go to see if the places really are five stars. Yeah, I just want to go to all these five star places. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not there for some weird sort of like wife tourism. I'm there for the food tourism to judge you. Can I do that? Yeah. That's all he wants. That's all I want. <laughs> I want to do it for another <laughs> weird reason. Yeah. Um, some of these places, I'm just like, there's no way this is five stars. That's what I'm saying. Some of these seem honest. Like, this one has four stars and 12 reviews. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that, I, that I buy. That seems yeah. more real. Yeah, some of them, it's like, all right, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, I would trust those more than the perfect ones. This is, yeah, I don't, I just don't, I just don't have answers. <laughs> This is this it's tripping place? me out uh, everywhere I look. Here's There's the thing, a... though. I think it's there's so many restaurants that if you're too far out, it gives you the best ones rather than the real ones. And people can cheese it. Yeah, that's because if you go down to the block level, I'm looking at one block that has 12 restaurants on it and two coffee places. And they're like four point seven. Uh, 3.5, 4.5, 3.9, 4. All right, so these are actually, I feel like we, we're getting cheated by being too far out on the map. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. Um, however. Which is insane, but, you know. I found a place called Hin Coffee. It's got a 4.9, 2,500 reviews, but I go down, and there's a person that gave it four stars and said, if you want to take photos, good place ever, not for coffee itself. And then I think they're right because it's just a bunch of people like taking Instagram pictures there. And then someone else gave it three stars and just said, nice inside, relaxed atmosphere, reasonably clean, can be cramped depending on the amount of people. People, Coffee drinks counter very small cramped. I mean, that sounds that sounds correct. Yeah. I found a, I found a place that's less of a coffee shop and more of a coffee stand out on the street. And uh, I thought it was Fatus Coffee, but... The comment says, pronounced fat-ass. <laughs> and I'm like, is this fat-ass coffee? <laughs> fat-ass coffee. <laughs> well, what a fat-ass coffee. <laughs> uh, this, I mean, it's it's an interesting vibe. A lot of these restaurants are uh, straight up just like holes in the wall. Yeah, and so I, I would love to know what is the good hole in the wall versus like, you know, sometimes you're going to get like, that's the spot. Yeah. And then sometimes, and sometimes you're like, oh, you'll get food like, poisoning there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on the part of the city, but I don't know. I, I don't know a damn thing about Ho Chi Minh City at all. Yeah. Well, that's the weather. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go to sports. Sports. Oh, boy, we've got sports. And we've got sports. So currently, sports, uh, the uh, basketball, we've got the NBA Finals. And it is the uh, Boston Celtics taking on the Dallas Mavericks in the Finals. Uh, meanwhile, in the NHL, we've got the Florida Panthers going on to the Stanley Cup. And currently, Edmonton's up 3-2 on the Dallas Stars. And they will take on Florida, whoever wins that series between the Stars and the Oilers. Uh, and then over in baseball, we got the Yankees in first, the Cleveland Guardians in first, the Seattle Mariners in first, the Phillies in first, the Brewers in first, and the Dodgers all in first. And, and sports. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is sports. Uh, all right. What is our fact of the day? Fact of the day, fact of the day, fact of the day. The day. Uh, here's a fun fact. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> uh, you can actually die laughing. Um, I've definitely felt it sometimes, especially on this show. So <laughs> yeah. I would love to know what puts you over the edge, because I've almost been there where I could not breathe, so... This, it's possible. This says, and a number of people have, typically due to intense laughter causing a heart attack or suffocation. 
Okay. Suffocation, I get. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. And that links to this article. It says, yes, it is possible to die from laughing, but don't let this stop you enjoying your favorite sitcom. There are just a handful of reported cases, usually due to intense laughter causing a heart attack or suffocation. People have also been known to faint from laughing, which can lead to injuries, and some narcolepsy sufferers report temporary losses of consciousness triggered by laughter or other stronger emotions. There are some very rare fatal brain conditions that can cause uncontrollable laughter. So, like some sort of Joker poisoning is what I'm hearing. Yeah, Joker poisoning. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. like you get Joker poisoned. Right. Yeah, Joker poison. Um, well, I mean, okay. It, I've again, I've certainly felt it before, where uh, I've laughed so hard that I my head like went light. Yeah, I've I've had you know, you you laugh so much that happens, or like you just can't breathe, like you said. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I I, I can see it. Right, a little too crazy, and then you're like, "Whoa!" You never know. I mean, I don't know why they said sitcoms. I've never laughed that hard at a sitcom. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's never why been they a said... thing where I've been like, <laughs> <laughs> "Never, it's, it's uh, never happened." That's funny because I had the exact same thing when they said sitcom. I was like, "Sitcoms, okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's funny, and there's been sitcoms that are funny, but not like it almost killed me funny. Yeah, more like a. <laughs> 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 that's a good joke great joke um, so that's fun. your fact of the day <laughs> alright what is our big news story of the day big news story of the day uh, we got more monkey news ah <laughs> oh, this is what I'm here for okay uh, Thai Town launches plan to lock up marauding monkeys and send them away <laughs> oh no, they're gonna deport the monkeys. They're gonna deport the monkeys. I feel like some I other town. Like this. I feel like some other town was doing this as well. Maybe it was a we similar. We also know town. that in Japan they had uh, ladies with guns shooting monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a Thai town run rag ragged by its ever growing population of marauding wild monkeys launched an offensive against the Simian Raiders on Friday using trickery and ripe tropical fruit. The Simian Raiders sounds like a football team. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> Several high-profile cases of monkey-human conflict recently convinced authorities <laughs> Planet of the Apes style <laughs> that they had to reduce the animal's numbers. If all goes well, most will end up behind bars before starting new life elsewhere. Then why, where are they going to put the monkey? In prison? In monkey prison? That's what they say. Uh, dude, I swear, one other town, I don't know if it's Thailand, but we did a story. It was, like, similar to this. I think the monkeys are just taking over. It's like the killer whales. Are animals finally tired of our shit? I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. The first stage of the plan instituted Friday is to bait cages with the animal's favorite food, then wait for hunger to get the better of their natural caution. There was early success for the catchers on the one street, with three of the monkeys falling for the roost and ending up trapped because they had fancied a taste of rambutan fruit. The cages had been placed on the street earlier in the week, so the monkeys got used to them and found them less threatening. There are thought to be 2,500 <laughs> monkeys around the town. Uh, the effort will go on for five days this month and is likely to be repeated. Some of the monkeys will be left free to maintain Lotbury's image as Thailand's monkey town. I think maybe we did a story about this, but they hadn't started capturing them yet, and now they're capturing them. I mean, with monkeys' intelligence. If, <laughs> if some of them go into the cage and are caught, others outside won't enter to get the food because they've learned what happened to their friends. Damn, dude. <laughs> the roaming monkeys have been long a symbol of the town, uh, north of Bangkok, and are a major tourist draw. They become increasingly aggressive, however, with several videos of them snatching food from residents and causing injuries. One auto part shop now trades... Wait, now trades be from behind wire? <laughs> oh. Oh, the, wait. Uh, what do the monkeys need with auto parts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things. Yeah, why are they I going mean, after like the mechanics? Like a grocery store or a fruit stand or whatever, but auto parts? Yeah, I don't know. They're just like, no, can't let the monkeys near here. I mean, that's yeah. why, I mean, I get it. That's why AutoZone is so heavily fortified. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Pet boys. It's like pet boys, <laughs> not pet monkeys, dude. Yeah, those, those monkeys will go there. Uh, they, <laughs> the owners erected it at the time of the coronavirus pandemic, but keeping out the light-fingered primates was also a prime concern. They say they've been ad they've adapted to the monkey problem, but not everyone has. Quote, 
When there are a lot of monkeys around, customers are afraid of buying the goods at our shop. Only our regulars aren't frightened. The town mayor, Cameron Salachip, agrees that the monkeys, while bringing in visitors, have also become bad for trade, with shops and malls seeing a drop in income and even people's homes damaged. Lotbury, he said, is almost an abandoned town. After our operation's over, I'll do a big cleaning across the town and paint all the buildings to regain the faith of the people. These may seem like grim times for monkeys in Lotbury, but there's a plan <laughs> to give them a fresh start. Sure there is. On Friday, authorities began sedating them to carry out health checks before cleaning and sterilizing them and inking them with tattoos so they can be identified to keep accurate records. They're After tattooing that, monkeys? They're tattooing monkeys. Uh, all, so wait, they're spending money to tattoo monkeys yeah. and to imprison monkeys and yeah. to repaint a town that is known for monkeys. Yeah. And everyone is just fine with it. Yeah. Okay. After that, they'll transfer them to a series of huge holding pens just outside the town center while looking for a permanent home. Monkey deportation. <laughs> yep. Uh, who knew it would get so bad? Yeah, who knew? The monkeys. They planned it, of course. Oh, 100%. They knew. <laughs> Those just... monkeys. <laughs> just like Planet <laughs> of the Apes. You're right. Yeah, they're too smart now. Yeah, they're too smart. Now they're not falling for the traps either? <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. First, they don't fall for the traps. Next, they take over the world. That's it. Monkeys. Then, yeah, then we're done. Yeah, it's over. Then we're replaced by, by ape. Yep, we're worried about AI. We should be worried about ape eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't die from that's laughter. How you, that's how you end a podcast right there. <laughs> yeah, don't die from laughter there. It's. <laughs> I know you might. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's just wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for us. Thanks so much for listening and watching. I'm enjoying this podcast. Crandor, hit him with the socials. We got socials, youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. That's where you can find these on YouTube. They're also on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. Just search Cox and Crendor. You'll find it. Also, <laughs> we're there. Yeah, the animations over on youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor. Also, we got our own stuff. Twitch TV Crendor, Twitch TV Jesse Cox, YouTube Crendor, YouTube Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor, Facebook Jesse Cox, TikTok Crendor, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok. Uh, TikToks. TikTok, Instagram, TikToks. Notorious Cox, Instagram, Crendor was taken, Patreon, Jess Cox, Patreon, Crendor, YouTube, Warhammer, Crendor, if you like Warhammer, uh, Cox Clips, Cren Clips, uh, that's it. All right, that's it for us. We'll see you all next time, and as always, woo, to be continued.